Let's look at another example of adding fractions with unlike denominators. We are going to add 1 quarter plus 3 eighths. We have some diagrams ready. Okay. So first, for 1 quarter, I'm going to break that into 4 equal pieces. So I cut it in half, I cut the halves in half, and that's 4 equal pieces. And we have one of them shaded, 1 fourth. To cut into eighths, well, I'm going to cut in half, and then this is four pieces, and to get eight, if I cut the four pieces in half, that will give me a total of eight pieces. And we have three eighths. Okay, now Let's write this out in just a different way using the greatest common factor idea. So the biggest factor they both have in common is 4. The denominator is 4 is divisible by 4, 8 is divisible by 4. So I'm just going to write this as 1 quarter, we'll do 1 times 4, and 8 is 2 times 4. Okay. So their greatest common factor is 4. So if I want to make this diagram have the same number of pieces as this one, I can just cut each piece, each one piece, into two pieces, and that will give me eight. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Notice I don't need to change this one at all, because once I change this into eighths by cutting these in half, we have the same number of pieces. Now one quarter is equivalent to two eighths. We want to add three eighths. So I'm going to make our answer unit fraction have eight pieces. So there's the two one quarter, which is two eighths. And we're going to add on the three eighths. Doesn't really matter where you fill them. And now notice in total, our result combined is one, two, three, four, five shaded pieces out of the unit cut into eight pieces or five eighths. Okay. So now let's think about the symbolic representation of an algorithm. So if we don't want to draw pictures and cut them in, into all these pieces, what could we do? Now we said before that we can always, I could have cut the four pieces each into eight pieces. That would give me 32 pieces. The eight pieces into four pieces, which would give me 32 pieces. And that would actually work. So let's just see what that looks like real quick. So if I uh, wrote one quarter, cut it into eight pieces, that would be eight over 32. If I did that with three eighths, I would cut those into four pieces. That gives me 12 over 32. And then I'm going to add them together. 8 over 32 plus 12 over 32 equals 20 over 32. Okay, And this is actually a correct answer. It's equivalent to 5 eighths, but it's not simplified. Okay, So to simplify it, we need to divide by the greatest common factor of 20 and 32. Okay, So they each have a common factor of 4. And then the fours would cancel the ones, and we would get five eighths. Okay. So in this case, we didn't work hard to find the least common denominator. We just used the product, but we ended up using that four that we could have canceled out here. Okay. Uh, and we had to use that greatest common factor to simplify. Okay. So that's the the payoff. Either way, you're going to have to deal with that 4 somewhere. Do you want to deal with it when you're finding the least common denominator or when you need to simplify in the end? That is your choice. Okay, so let's look at this now using the, so this 32 was a common multiple, but it wasn't the least common multiple. So now let's do it with the least common multiple or least common denominator, which we found was 8. Okay, and again, we found that by looking at these two quantities, we could multiply the two numbers, 4 times 8, and divide by their greatest common factor of 4, which gives us 8. Okay, 
So 4 times 8, the greatest common factor is 4, divide by that and we get 8. So now here we have 1 quarter, to write that as something over 8. 4 times what gives me 8? Well that will be 2, and we get 2 eighths. Okay, the 3 eighths we don't even need to rewrite, because it's already over 8. Add the numerators, keep the denominator, and we have 5 eighths. Okay, so if you find the least common denominator, you may need to simplify. In this case, we didn't. Um, if you use just any common denominator, you can find the product, and it's a little bit easier to find the common denominator, but you'll have to simplify in the end. Okay, so in this case, one of the denominators was a multiple of another. In the last case, the two denominators didn't have any common factors, so we had to use their product. Now we're going to look at one last example where they have a common factor that's greater than 1, but they're not multiples of each other. So 6 and 9 are the numbers I'm referring to, the denominators. So they're not multiples of each other, but they each have a common factor of 3. So let's write this as 5 over 3 times 2 plus 4 over 3 times 3. Okay, and I have some number lines ready here. So notice here's the unit from 0 to 1 broken into 1, 2, 3 equal pieces. So I have it broken in threes on purpose to illustrate an idea. So if we wanted to plot 5, 6, okay, if this is broken in three, I'd need to cut it in each of those into two more pieces to be able to plot 6. So I'll cut these in half. Now this would be 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, here is 5, 6. Okay. So for 4 ninths, okay, this is cut into 3 to get 9 pieces. I need to cut each of the 3 pieces into 3. So I'll make 2 tick marks to cut them into 3's. So Now this is a total of 9 pieces. Feel free to pause and count and we want 4, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, so here's 4 ninths. Okay. Now the problem is we want to add one number onto another. We have them on the number line, but notice the tick marks aren't lining up, okay, because they have different denominators. Okay, so let's use the idea of the greatest common factor. Their greatest common factor was 3, so that means their least common denominator least common multiple of the denominators is the product of the two numbers, 6 times 9, divided by 3. So I'm just going to cancel out this common factor of 3. There it cancels to 1, there to 2, and we get 18. Now let's see how this works in the picture. Well, we had 3 times 2, 6 pieces here. We need to cut each of these pieces into 3 more pieces. That's the extra 3 from the 9. And I'm just going to do that real quick. Okay. And here, we would need to cut each of the 9 pieces into 2 more pieces to get 18. Let's do that in a different color. So we'll cut those in half. Okay. Now, it may be hard to tell, but now these actually line up. So now they're broken into the same amount of pieces. So 5, 6, what would this be in terms of 18 Well, we cut it into three more pieces for this three from the other denominator. So that's 15 18 Here we cut the ninths into two more pieces. So 4 ninths into two more pieces, which is eight eighteenths. So in total, if we added these together, we'd have fifteen plus eight over eighteen, which is twenty-three over eighteen. Okay. Rewriting that as a mixed number, it's one. So there's I'm going to subtract eighteen from twenty-three, so it would go in once and there'd be five left over, one and five eighteenths. So our result would be, let's break this 
we won't break the whole thing into eighteenths because we don't have to go that far but we need to break this into six pieces okay so we're going to cut it in half then cut it in thirds okay so this would be one and one two three four five eighteenths okay so if we took this segment add it on this segment the result would take us right here So you certainly don't want to draw this picture every time you want to add these, but I wanted you to be able to visualize the cutting process and how the GCF is connected to the least common denominator because it will save you a lot of time. Again, with smaller numbers, you can use the least common multiple um, or list multiples, 6, 12, 18, 24. Those are multiples of 6, 9, 18, 27. Those are multiples of 9, but again, if those numbers were 41 and 72, you would be writing really, really long lists. So that's when this idea comes in handy. So let's write our final answer. We've already written, uh, so our first step is rewrite them with a common denominator. So this is equivalent to 15 eighteenths plus 8 eighteenths. You add the numerators, you keep the denominator, here is our result is an improper fraction. It's actually completely simplified. I know that because 23 is prime, so it doesn't share any common factors. Uh, the directions don't say to rewrite it as a mixed number, and you don't necessarily have to, but we've already done so. So we will again. This is equivalent to 1 and 5 eighteenths.